you might know what this is. Magic the Gathering cards. I've been a big fan of magic since I was a child, and for a very long time my goal was to become a magic illustrator. But I'm not there yet. And lately I've been doing a lot of character designs, so I've been wondering what it would be like to design a character from the Magic the Gathering universe. But the universe of Magic the Gathering is expanding more and more, like now there's even crossovers with Lord of the Rings, which is confusing to me. So I really did not know what to create as a character. So I decided to ask ChatGPT to give me a complete description of a Magic the Gathering character with a full visual description. And I actually have been surprised with the result. It gave me a full description of a character with its name, its race, even its color alignment, and even the character's personality and its visual appearance. So it's a bit like receiving a brief from an art director. I've had to ask for a few different character descriptions before finding one that suits me. And I decided to go for this vampire character. I've never drawn a vampire before and I really rarely do female character designs. So I thought it would be a good challenge for me and get me out of my comfort zone. Just do it! Let's be honest, her visual description is not the best, especially for her clothing, because it tells me that she basically has just a full black leather bodysuit, which is not really interesting design-wise, so I'm going to take some liberties considering that. Of course, if it was a real art brief from an art director from Magic the Gathering, I would stay much more closer to it, while still adding my little touch to make it even more interesting and unique. So now that you have all description for our character, it's time to research reference that's incredibly important for any project that you have. So to make myself more familiar with the character designs of the universe of magic, I decided to search online for other images and paintings and I found this awesome website that collects all the images that were done for every set and some sets from magic were actually focused on the color black with characters like vampires, werewolves and stuff like that. So that was the best source to find inspiration. So I saved these images in a new pure file along with other various references that would help me in my task. And before starting out, we need to take a little bit of time to analyze what the character designs of the magic universe look like. So I feel like they all have fairly complex costumes and clothing that have a lot of overlapping and that have a lot of ornaments and small elements. They oftentimes also have very strong contrast within the clothing, so with very light or very dark parts of the clothing, so that they can read well on small cards. And so those are all things that we have to keep in mind when creating our character. By the way, I also launched a weekly newsletter where once a week I send you an email with some cool art resources and I give away a ton of free stuff like brushes, PSDs, free reference pictures, and even exclusive discounts for my courses. So if you are interested interested in that, the link to sign up is in the description down below. And now, it's time to design this character. My process for character design is almost always the same. That way I can follow the reliable steps of my process and focus on being creative instead of asking myself what I should do next. And by the way, if you want a deeper dive into my process of creating character designs, I have a course that's available on my online store. And just for you, I put a link in the description down below that gives you 50% of the course. So if you are interested, go check it out. So I always start with some rough stitches where I'm searching for the design and I'm trying to be free and be loose at that time. This stage is where you have to be wild. Explore as many designs as possible until you run out of ideas. And really don't limit yourself. A stitch like this should take no more than 10 minutes. So it's not a big time investment and it doesn't matter if the design in the end doesn't work or if you have to start over again. It's just about exploring ideas and not being afraid of mistakes. Next, I refine the lines to make the design more readable before adding colors. But this time I had no real idea of what I wanted to do with colors. I knew that following the script from ChatGPT I had to have a color palette that was black and red, but it felt too generic for me and I just wasn't inspired by that. So what I did is that I searched online for color palettes that were already done, including black and red colors, and I found some pretty cool idea that I used as a basis for my thumbnails. At that point, I felt like my sketches were still too classic and the design was not interesting enough. So I decided to do a bunch more of sketches, but unfortunately I forgot to record them. So from these sketches, I chose two Della lights and I pushed them a little bit further to see if they worked. And after careful consideration, I decided to go with the sketch on the right. It's the repetition of triangular shapes that gave this character a more aggressive and pointy look and that was what I was looking for in the design. Next, it was time to work on the final concept. At this stage, if I was working for an art director, we would have had a lot of back and forth already. Talking about the design, the art director would have given me a lot of direction and feedback, but this time I'm my own art director, so I'm going a little bit more straightforward and I'm 
choosing a little bit more quickly the design that I want to exploit. For the final concept, I was looking for a cool pose that would convey the personality of the character. It's never easy to do that because for a concept, you really don't want a pose that's too extreme because you still need to easily be able to read the design. If the concept is the final product, then you can get away with a lot. But if you are working, for example, for a video game studio or a movie studio, then you are going to need to use a pose that's a lot more neutral because after the concept is done, there's a 3D artist that is going to model your character and you need your character to be the easiest to translate in 3D as possible. Once the pose was ready, I filled the entire silhouette with colors and started adding shadows and lights and slowly working over the lines. Again, if you are interested in a more in-depth look at my techniques and my process, then you can check out my online course, the link is in the description. And at this point, you might look at the character and tell yourself that it looks really bad and ugly. And it's true, but that's the phase that every character I create has to go through between the line drawing phase and the final painting phase. There's a point where it's just going to look ugly and I have to work over everything to make it look good. So at that stage, you just have to be patient and take your time to render and paint and create something cool. Make sure to avoid zooming in and focusing on details too soon though. Instead, you have to start with big shapes first as painting is all about that. And don't be afraid to make changes to the design either. My design changed quite a bit between the drawing and the final painting and I'm sure it might happen as well if you are working for an eye director. Sometimes an eye director is going to change his mind or have new ideas along the process and tell you to do some changes on the character design. This happens really often and you don't have to be frustrated about that. It's just a hard pill to swallow sometimes to have to rework a bunch of areas of your character but that's the way it is. So the goal of this character was to create a vampire with an interesting and unique design that conveys personality. To achieve this, the whole design is based on triangular shapes. Almost everything on the character is made of triangles, giving a feeling of cohesion to the character. And that's something that's really cool to remember the next time you are creating a new character design. Base yourself on a few very simple shapes that you are going to repeat throughout the whole design. Of course, you can have some variations of size and of contrast. If your whole design is based on some simple shapes, you can repeat them and put them wherever you want on the design. And that's still going to the cool. Also, I avoided using black too much because I felt like it would be just way too generic. So I'm happy about the color choices that I made in the end. For a main clothing, I went for a dark bluish slash greenish tone that makes me think about the night sky and it's illuminated by the full moon. So I think that it fits well with the character. And also for the contrast, I added some golden details so that it adds a little bit of light to the character. Really made sure to spend a lot of time on the hands and the face because as humans, that's what we pay the most attention to. And so oftentimes, even if your design is really good, if your hands and the face are not working, it's going to break your painting. Take a lot of references for hands and faces. And even if you can find them online, take them of yourself or ask a friend or a family member to put for you so that you have references that are the closest to the final painting as possible. So of course this is not an official character for Magic the Gathering but I feel like it would fit in the universe well which was the whole challenge. So ChatGPT is actually a very cool tool if you want to create new characters but you like ideas and you want an idea generator ChatGPT is the way to go. So I hope you liked this video and you found it useful and if it's the case you might like this video as well.